What is up Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some stories that was in the live stream on Friday. Just so you can get straight into the stories rather than listen to all the waffle that I do during a live stream and there's a lot of it, believe you me. <laughs> and so I won't carry on anymore. Just about to start waffling then. This story is from Leprechaun8. Today I messed up by drinking a gallon of milk in one hour to shove it in Reddit's face. <laughs> It's still in my post history because I am permanently keeping it as a reminder that I'm an effing idiot whenever my ego gets out of check. Okay, so this morning I posted on Reddit a conversation me and my friends had in which we all unanimously agreed that drinking a gallon of milk in under an hour is 100% possible and it's an incredibly easy challenge. My reasoning was that an entire hour is a lot of time. And that if you just slowly and steadily drink the milk while portioning yourself, there's no reason why anybody can't do it. One of the lesser challenges was doing a half challenge in an hour. And I can say from a certain experience with hot sauce a while ago that I was 100% capable of achieving that. So I was absolutely confident I could do too. I posted it to Reddit feeling pretty high and mighty of myself on the unpopular opinions board and was immediately provided with multiple comments informing me that I was an idiot and had no idea what I was talking about. These comments from inferior humans asked me to record my endeavours and I was without a doubt ready and willing to prove them wrong. So I went to my local 7-Eleven, bought a 2 gallon of 2% and got back to my dorm. I will give myself credit through my naive ego. I did prepare for the worst a little bit. I sat with a towel bib in case of dribblage and I pre-opened one of the shower stalls because the toilets would not account the possible gallons worth of milk that could occur from the bivalicious odyssey I was about to traverse upon. So I turned on my video camera and filled up five approximately 25 ounces, 25 ounces cups of milk. Looking at these completely full cups in front of me, the milk carton definitely tricks you with its sheer volume. And I was realizing the challenge ahead of me. But mama didn't raise no bitch, so I went in. <laughs> First cup, totally easy. I love milk. My father, brother, and I will go through a gallon within two to three days tops. And all I have to do is do this every 12 minutes and I'm home free. And all those losers on Reddit will know how cool I am. <laughs> Second cup, I down this one too. Easy peasy. Though the first signal to my brain that I was very much so satiated with my daily value of calcium was already upon us. Though this was a challenge even the greatest often failed at. I wasn't going to estimate this challenge, but rather like a matador, I will corral this bull with steadiness and finesse. Third cup, this one I was able to not consistently down. I got about halfway through and I had to breathe for a second, but I had a 12 minute window to down this so I don't have to rush it. The camera is still recording. I wonder if I have to post this full hour of footage to prove it, or I can just skip to each time I drink. Ha, imagine the looks on their faces when they see I can drink an entire gallon. How much time till I fix my next cup? I've got 30 seconds. Fourth cup, okay, I finished the third cup in the time window. The 12 minute mark hit and I didn't immediately drink it. I picked it up, inspected its beautiful color and temperature and immediately had to put it back down because a certain noise just befell my ears. Did my stomach just hiccup? Me and humbleness have a very long distance relationship and as the crazy Zodiac girl in my nursing classes has informed me, you totally do give off Leo energy. And while my understanding of stars is lacking, I think that translates to, at this very moment, I definitely have gotten myself into a bad scenario, thanks to my ego. I begin to drink the fourth cup, and my stomach is really starting to slosh around. It's just stagnant and sitting in there, and I can feel it truly filling up. Somehow, by sheer miracle or luck, I get cup four down, within the time window, within a few minutes to spare. Fifth cup, all I did was burp. A very small burp, but it came with a mouthful of milk. I realized my fate was sealed. As I swallowed it back down, I knew that the second part of the challenge was actually sitting there and not puking as the body begins to naturally break down the lactose and shit in the milk. <laughs> I haven't even touched the fifth cup yet. I just decided to bring my knees up to my chest to help with the completely full stomach. Then I, very graciously I should add, sprinted like a madman to the open shower, kneeled on that gross ass floor and prepared for the inevitable. 10 seconds, 15, nothing was happening. So I slowly got up and went back to head to my room to hopefully finish the challenge. And then I bumped the stall door right into my gut. 
In that moment, I saw two things. The whiter the milk projectile ejecting from my mouth into the shower floor from my rapidly turning head as not to destroy everything. And the vision of God punishing me for the next probably 40 years because I attempted to achieve the ways of the golden calf. <laughs> It is now five hours later and Reddit has won this time with their stupid facts and basic science that I chose to ignore. I'm still making frequent trips to the bathroom with generous supplies of dairy for the toilet from both ends. <laughs> if you need me, I will be listening to I told you so from the toilet. Edit, it has only been two hours and so far I've seen many people read the story, understand my overconfidence with it and then comment that they bet they could personally do the challenge themselves and will be trying soon which makes me feel better knowing that I'm not ill for this world. Thanks guys. <laughs> and from this day forward, he shall be dubbed Milk Boy. <laughs> and this story mentions someone passing away. So if you do want to skip it, you can turn the volume down right now or come back in a couple of minutes. And if you're watching this after the live stream, you can use the timestamps below. So this story comes from Neh 1997. Today I messed up by exclaiming it smells like a dead body when an actual dead body was in the house. This happened in 2015 when I was a senior in high school. My grandfather had been diagnosed with cancer in September of 2014 and had been told that it was terminal. He had just retired and we were all really sad that he wasn't going to be able to enjoy retirement with his wife. He remarried after my grandma. He was a goofy guy who wore pants with embroidered ducks on them and always had a magic trick to show everyone when we would visit. During his last day alive, my mother, sister and myself came over to support his wife. There were also neighbours coming in and out of the house, saying their goodbyes and just consoling each other. When my grandfather passed away, we were all in the room with him and told him we loved him and that it was okay to let go. After we left the room to give his wife some time alone, my sister, my mum and I went downstairs to join neighbours at the dining room table. This table was able to seat about 8 people and it was full so I was standing next to my mum at the head of the table. People had brought food to snack on and someone brought a cheese plate. I did not notice this cheese plate so I started to comment about how stinky the room was to my mum and sister. Eventually I said the words, it smells like a dead body, out loud in front of everyone. The room was silent except for my mum and sister's attempts to conceal their laughter. I turned beet red and added, um, dead cat, to the sentence and then abruptly left to use the bathroom and reassess my life. I know my grandpa would have laughed if he heard it, so that makes me feel better, but I can never look at any of those neighbours in the face without remembering that moment. And I gotta read one out from Vumanda who replies to this saying, God, I love funny stories like this, it reminds me of my grandfather. My grandfather passed at the age of 90. They were putting him on hospice and were giving him one to two months, but said he was perfectly stable and not going anywhere that day. Well, he was convinced he was going that very minute. He made my mum and I hold his hand while he tried to say some picture perfect last words, take a deep breath and then sit there in silence. After a minute of that, he'd do it again and switch the words up a little bit, but he just wouldn't die. It was like trying to watch Michael Scott sink a behind the back shot. My dad who was leaning against the wall during all of this shifted his weight and accidentally hit the light switch, turning the reading light on right over my grandfather. You could hear the excitement in his voice. There it is. I see the light. It's finally time. Why we were having to hold back the weirdest mix of grief and comedy tears I've ever had in my life. And this next one comes from a throwaway account. Today I messed up by unknowingly committing a crime and inadvertently turning myself into the police. So this actually happened a few weeks ago. I just moved to the suburbs of New Jersey from Philadelphia a few months ago. I was at a friend's house for a Zoom baby shower and I ended up staying all day and playing video games and eating dinner. My boyfriend met me there later on to hang out and park next to me in the driveway. They live on the entrance to a cul-de-sac. We were getting ready to leave around 12.30am. My phone had died so I figured I would back out behind him and follow him home since I'm new to the area. I pulled out extra wide to give him space and I did not see a dark blue car parked behind their driveway. It was pretty hazy and foggy that night and I scratched the inside of the car with my tail light. Minimal body damage was done to the door. A few scratches, a little bit of paint from my car. I got out of my car, immediately wrote a note with my information on it and decided to go home so I could charge my phone and call my insurance. I got home and immediately called my insurance and they requested I upload a copy of the police report. Okay, I'll call the police, let them know what happened. Shouldn't be a big deal. This happens all the time, right? Wrong. The cop told me he was going to charge me with a hit and run. He accused me of being drunk. I was not at all. 
I offered to meet him at the station, at the scene of the accident, at my house. He refused to meet me anywhere. He told me it was too late. I already made the wrong choice and he was forced to charge me. I started to drive back to the scene of the accident and he told me on the phone to pull over and immediately send him all my information in an email. I complied with everything he told me to do. He told me he was going to the residence of people whose car I hit to notify them that they were probably going to want to press charges against me. I told him to call me back after he got done there. He never did. The next day, I was able to get in touch with a neighbor who was awesome. She was super understanding and if anything, just mad the cop showed up at her house at 1 a.m. She told me he said, we're forced to charge her since she left the scene. And the neighbor replied she left a note. Anyone would have done that, it's 1 a.m. This is not necessary. At that point, he urged them to press charges on me because I could have been drunk and I'm old enough to know better. A week goes by and I hear nothing from the officer. The car is in the shop getting fixed and my insurance is paying for it. The neighbors have no intent of pressing charges against me. I send the neighbors a basket filled with milk bar cookies for causing them any trouble. Yesterday, I get a ticket in the mail for leaving the scene of the accident with a mandatory court appearance and I just hired a very expensive lawyer. I work in sales and have a company car. I have to drive for work. My lawyer wanted to know how the police got involved to which I replied, I called them. I called the cops on myself and <laughs> now I have to pay a lot of money to get it fixed. I could lose my job over a bad driving record. So yeah, today I messed up. And that is really sad. Is that cop just power tripping or what, man? And this next one is from Fine Explanation. This happened about a week ago. Before I go into detail with how I fucked up, I will preface this with three important details. One, I regularly misspeak when I'm not paying attention or in a rush. Buying something at the store and rushing to get home. Go to say cheers, last minute, change to thanks, end up saying chance. Rushing to meet and colleague asks if I have a review document for him. Sorry, my bad, we'll do it when I get back. Turns into, sorry, I'm mad, we'll do when I get back. Two, at work, we have recently had to complete several different online training modules, bullying, modern slavery, etc., pushed out by our HR department. One of these modules included sexual harassment, basically a 10 minute presentation of how not to be a dick and what to do if others are being a dick. For whatever reason, this module and the modern slavery were slow to be completed, probably because they were the last two of the five to complete. And so HR were constantly sending company-wide emails that this one particular one was important and had to be completed ASAP. Three, when I leave the office for whatever reason, I do the three pocket check, front left pocket, phone, front right pocket, keys, rear pocket, wallet. Onto the fuck up. So I was going away for work over a long weekend. I was staying in a fairly touristy town and because of the absence of international travel at the moment, everything is busy, really busy. Had a quick look at the accommodation in the area and nothing decent is available. Sent an email to our admin assistants to see if they could help given I wasn't overly keen about staying in backpackers accommodation. Two hours later, hotel room is booked in one of the nicer hotels in the area for the entire stay legend go down to thank them on my way to lunch chat with a female admin assistant who booked it all for me and mention how i thought i was gonna have to stay in a hostel and have a bit of a laugh as i'm leaving she asks is there anything else you need just let me know at this point i am already thinking about what i want to eat for lunch and thinking whether i have my wallet turning i go to say no more last minute special requests hopefully realize that sounds stupid and decide a simple thanks is more appropriate what comes out though is spanks for whatever fuck that reason my brain thinks is appropriate as I am tapping my back pocket to check if my wallet is in there. <laughs> Cue somewhat initial shock by said admin girl and head shaken by HR lady who had just walked in. Probably thinking this is exactly the reason for the training we are pushing out. Thankfully the admin girl just started laughing and the verbal diarrhea coming out of my mouth trying to explain what just happened letting HR know nothing inappropriate was meant by my actions. Had a red face for the rest of the day though and still actively avoiding them both. <laughs> this story is from Seabelt3. Today I messed up by confiscating my son's Game Boy and hiding it for 18 years. My son was not doing his homework so I confiscated his Game Boy Advance. I told him he would get it back next week. Well he's a pretty clever dude and knew all my hiding places so I put it someplace he would never look except I suffered a traumatic brain injury a few years earlier and I forget stuff. So when he did his homework and asked for it back after a week, I could not find it. Ah, I looked everywhere. Narrator, obviously not everywhere. SpongeBob, 
18 years later. <laughs> I was donating some coats I had not worn in a long time, and in the pocket in a Viennese trench coat from the 1930s I found his Game Boy Advance and turned it on, and it worked! Pokemon appeared. I put in fresh batteries into it and handed it to my 28 year old son, who proceeded to laugh for a good 5 minutes, then played it for a few hours, then proceeded to tell my wife and other adult children how silly I was. <laughs> how crazy is that though, that the Game Boy is that that old man wow but i think it's always nice when you find like your old toys around like in the loft or something like that i think that's amazing this story is from dirty toothbrushes today i messed up by accidentally getting married at the ups store this happened a couple of hours ago i recently proposed to my long-term girlfriend a couple of weeks ago unfortunately due to the nature of my work we have to move soon and having a real wedding before then during covid would be impossible I got off work early today and after getting home my fiance asked if we could go get some paperwork notarized for our courthouse wedding we planned to have in a month or two. We hopped in the car with a form we printed off the county website and drove to the closest UPS. The notary checked our IDs and had us sign and then she signed, notarized the form and said congratulations. Cool, now all we have to do is go to the courthouse on the day of our choosing to be wed. My fiance called the courthouse afterwards, double checking to see if we needed to bring anything else. And after calling me her boyfriend, the lady on the phone corrected her by saying, husband. She then told my fiance, our state no longer requires a ceremony with the judge at the courthouse. That form is literally the marriage certificate and she is now married. Whoops, we had a honeymoon picnic at the park near a lake. <laughs> what the hell? Now, I don't know too much about how that all works or anything like that, but that sounds absolutely crazy. Did they miss some vital paperwork that told them this will literally be their them getting married or or is this happening to a lot of people? <laughs> and this story comes from Harold the Cat. Today, I messed up by posting to Reddit. Obligatory, this didn't happen today, more like two years ago. And before we get too much into it, I just want to mention it. There is a brief mention of, of someone harming a cat. So I just want to throw that out there if you want to turn this down or use the timestamps if you're watching this after the live stream. Two years ago, I was living with my ex and our roommate. We will call him Tony. So Tony comes home one day with his girlfriend Taylor after finding her cat getting thrown out the car window and rescuing it. I posted on Reddit this post with a picture of the cat saying, my roommate saw someone throw this kitten out of a window on the highway, picked her up and went to the vet. She has a paralyzed leg and a concussion. She's getting lots of love now. The post ends up getting some traction on Reddit and some upvotes. Taylor, the girlfriend, has a history of being batshit crazy, screaming and slamming doors during fights and just an overall crazy girlfriend. She is on Reddit herself and sees the post on r slash cats. She comes to my house and starts slamming doors and screaming at me, threatening to beat me up because I did not mention her in the post. All I said is my roommate found the cat, not my roommate and his girlfriend. She got so butthurt that I didn't mention her in a completely anonymous post for fake internet points. I honestly thought she was going to beat me up over this. Tony had to calm her down and I was half scared, half laughing. She is much bigger than me and actually works out. So if she did throw a punch, I would be down for the count. I've never been in a fight or even close to being in a fight until this day. Probably because I am a sane and nice person and people just don't want to hit me. She ended up taking the cat completely and never allowed me or my ex to see or hear updates on the cat. For fear I'd gain more fake internet points from strangers on an anonymous site. And from that day, I am considered the toxic one. Anyway, be careful what you post on Reddit. You never know what crazy person you will offend. If you're reading this, Taylor... F you. Hope I get more fake internet points because of you. <laughs> Talk about poking the bear, right? <laughs> and let's get a picture of that, that kitty. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless. Bless. This one is from I Am Not Jack's Nipples. What a great name. <laughs> Today I messed up by accidentally attending an underage party. Like a creep. Standard this happened about 10 years ago, etc. I was 25 heading to a 21st for a girl from uni at her house. She was living with her parents. It was far from my house and I knew the street so I just left home and when I got to the street I realized I didn't know the number and didn't have the invite. I messaged another friend to find out the address but he didn't have it either. There were only about 40 houses in the court and it was pretty quiet so I figured I'd just have a stroll and listen for music and a busy house. Stroll up to the only house with any sound music going. 
25 year old bloke, bottle of happy birthday vodka in hand, and I knock on the door. Hi, I am not Jack's nipples. I'm friend of Steph's, here for the birthday. Mum looks at me a bit confused, but pleasantly welcomes me in and walks me through the house past a group of roughly 15 year olds, family eyeing me uncertainly. I start thinking maybe that's just the younger cousins and the main party is out the back takes me further through the house to her other daughter's room, who is coincidentally is named Steph. Steph, your friend is here. As I round the corner into the doorway, I look at this 17 to 18 year old and my face drops. I don't know you, I say awkwardly. Then look at the mum desperately hoping I have not just become the biggest creep on the planet, bringing vodka to her 15th birthday as a bloke in his mid twenties. <laughs> Very fortunately, I explained who I was and who I was looking for and the lovely mum walked me down the street to the house I was meant to be at as she knew the family. I apologized profusely again and thanked her for the help and understanding. <laughs> now imagine it from the girl's point of view. This guy walks in, this adult walks in with a bottle of vodka in hand and the mum's just ushering him in. Go on. <laughs> Jesus. And the mum not concerned about him carrying vodka at all. <laughs> Strange one. Now, once again, I hope you did enjoy these stories. As I said before, these were all stories from the live stream, just tidied up for your benefit. I hope you did enjoy them. Thank you for being here today. And if you do want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you so much for your love, support and time. It really does mean the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.